you're starting a new FileMaker project, or maybe you're updating an existing project. But what does it look like? What do you want it to look like? Where do you start? Hi, I'm Daniel Shanahan, and I've created a template in FileMaker to make starting a project easy. Let's take a look at it. The template is very clean and minimalistic, and it uses NLD themes. If you haven't heard of NLD themes, there's another video that talks about the themes that I've created, and that's in another file. Both of these files are free. Let's walk around this layout. This is a company layout, a bunch of fake data, and we have over here, instead of having all of the menu items up top, the menu items are are in one place. So if you ever have to change a menu item, if you ever have to add menus, then you could do it just in one place. So it pops up in a card window. Over at the top you could see it expanded down here and I'll get to this in a minute. Let me just make that a little bit shorter for now. Over at the top, instead of having buttons on the layout, the buttons are compacted here. And so all of the actions that you would do, I'm sorry, uh, this is related data. Yeah, so if you wanted to have related data on here, instead of having tabs, tabs can clutter up a layout. So instead of having tabs, the, tab, the related data is in a card window. And I can close that. Now you notice this is other related data. This is our primary related data and that can fit in a portal right here on the layout. And I can, I can open up these three dots and I get a card window that gives me details on that, on that record. And the same happens here. So when I'm in this, this is other related data, but it's not the primary related data. And I can do the same thing. Click, the, click on this and it takes me to a card window for the, date, the details. And I close that and I come back to this list. And there's, there's other things in here too. So I can save and close and I can save and do next. So if I want to put some notes, some notes, I could save and close that. And now if I open that up again, it's, it's in there. I'll close that out. And then also, uh, avoiding a bunch of buttons on the layout, all the buttons that create actions are in here. I don't have any actions lined up because this is not a starter solution. This is a template. So this is where all your, your actions will go, your button actions. You could put a dashboard on here, totally optional. You could take it away if you don't want. But you might have uh, not, you know, there you could have several dashboards in a solution. You could have a major dashboard that has bits and pieces of all the data, but then each table or each entity might have some aggregates. So in this case, a company, might you might have company data, like who is the highest, uh, who, who are your top 10 companies by year, or who buys the most in volume by year, or where are your companies, where are these, where your customers, where are they distributed throughout your region, your, your country, or the world. You could do all of that in a dashboard and that would be particular to, uh, to this table. You could also put a dashboard here, which would be the bigger dashboard for the whole solution. And then you could put reports also related to the company and settings. Now, the only button I have on here is this go to related record, this related record here for healthcare. We can assign a, a, an industry here. And when I click on this, it's really important to notice, notice this. When I click on this, this is not designed. And just to emphasize that, this is not a starter solution. This is a template. And so the first layout is the one that's designed and and you would use this layout, uh, you would use this and design the rest of your layouts. Let's look at what's on the bottom here. It's built on a grid system. So we could see that there are 12 uh, grid columns here. There are 12 columns 
and this is taking up uh, I put a little I, I needed it a little extra space so I could use uh, a one-third and two-thirds but when I did that I realized that um, this was a little bit too much so I put a deeper gutter in here and but it's easy to do because it's lined up right here on this grid the template comes with uh, the template comes with custom menus so uh, we switch on that for a little bit uh, frequently but the template comes with uh, several of these design uh, layouts here let's take a look at that so this one here is built on the 1440 and the 1440 has 12 columns with uh, with a 12 pixel gutter and there's also one for 1336 and 1280. These are the most popular screen size, screen sizes, and 1280. And here's a, a, a template. We saw this with the portal. Here's a detailed template and a generic list template and just a placeholder template for uh, moving around uh, moving ar uh, data moving around uh, screens. Here's the screen resolution so this is why it's using the 1440, 1336 and the 1280 these are the most popular screen sizes. So that's in here too. There's a size for for the iPad mini. This has three columns and this has uh, three columns as well. This is in portrait, the other was in landscape, and then here's one for the iPhone. Here's the style dictionary. We're using, if I, let's see if I can get to, using themes, we're using the green base theme. There's a base and a print the themes don't come with an iOS because they're very, very similar, but I wanted some changes from the desktop to the iOS, so I just made, split that out. It's very easy to do, and I made a specific iOS theme. These are all, all of these uh, three layouts are from NLD themes, and that's the idea about NL, NLD themes is that you could you could take those layouts, when you import the theme, you could take those layouts and bring those into your solution, and then you have a style dictionary. So that's the design piece. The other piece is that um, it comes with some ideas about how to organize. Uh, you might have your own way of organizing uh, your layouts, which is fine. This comes with the idea of laying out the, uh, the, the layouts in this manner that the 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 user interface layouts are not in a folder and they are up top and they are in alphabetical order and then there's there's a divider and there are card windows again user inner user interface card windows and then some iOS layouts all of those are outside of a folder every table has a separate developer, has two separate developer tables. And the reason for those is that these developer tables, these tables would be used for scripting. So you could see on, on here, there's some script triggers on the layout and, and you'd never want to use, it, it's, it's best if you don't use a layout in your scripting that has a script trigger because oftentimes a script trigger will fire and that's when you're if you don't want that it's hard to to get that to not fire in a script so there are these layouts that are very simple they don't have related data they don't have calculated data they don't have summary data there's just some data on here but you don't really even need data at all and this way when you call it from a script it's pretty fast. There's also an accompanying table and this is helpful for the developer just to look at uh, at related data. Sorry, not related data, just the data of the table. 
the scripts are organized so that every table would have their own folder. They're empty. Most of these are empty. There's one script in here. And the reason they're empty is because this is not a starter solution. It's a template. So you could you really you could get rid of all these and uh, put in your own system. But if you don't have a system, then this would be one to consider. So all the tables have their own folder. And then there are some generic things that are useful, and these would stay with the template. And that's the card management, nav navigation, quick list, and so on. One of the other things about the system is that in uh, there's there's a number of notes in the scripts and you'll notice that I put my signature on the bottom so uh, I don't I'm not a fan of putting information at the top of the script that is that is far and away the most common method that many filemaker developers do I don't like it I put mine at the bottom I don't want to see it when I run through the debugger and I frequently have modification notes I, I was noticing this is a long time ago now but I was noticing I kept putting modification notes and this section got larger and larger and larger and so now I just moved it to the bottom and I can have as many modification notes as I like and it doesn't interrupt the visual flow of what's happening here. Okay, that's the script. And then for the data tables, tables, uh, there's a template in here which has the the fields as as I want them named. This can be this can be done by modifying the XML, but uh, I I just think that's cumbersome. So what I do is, is I create a table template that I, that I want, and then I copy it and I paste it, and then I'll have, and then I'll rename it. And so that's how I would do that, uh, and then I'd change that. The tables here are all in capital letters. You might have your own naming convention, and, uh, and then. And then uh, fields are in lower camel case. And again, you might have your own convention. IDs are simply ID, and then foreign keys are the name of the table, and then ID at the end. These are UUIDs, and so they are text fields. Um, let's see what else. Relationship graph is almost empty because it's not a starter solution. So you could do any method of design on your relationship graph that you'd like. Cancel this and discard that. And let's see, I think that's about it. So this is the template. This is, oh, let's do one more thing. Down here, there's um, there's support. I often put, I often put things in here like a, a, a button to access a knowledge base or uh, an email if they, for support. So you could do that here. And then I have, instead of a list view, I have the list view built in using a new feature that found, it's fairly new, FileMaker had, I think maybe in the last five years or so. So, so here are, is the list of all of them. And this, having it incorporated in the detail view means that uh, I don't have to have a company list view. It might, it might be beneficial. If you're doing things in the list view, if you're adding data in the list view, then you might want to have a list view. I usually start out with a list view as a navigation tool. And so as a navigation tool, I can do it here. I can, I can uh, do a search. Let's see, Smith, and then I can clear this. Uh, all this works. I'm, it's keyboard friendly, so if I just if I just type and click return, it will go. Whenever I do this, I, I get this found set, and then this record count updates too, and it tells me what my record count is of how many. And I can manually, or I, I could click that and, 
and uh, have it show all items too. And then I can move forward one record at a time. I could go to the last record and then these get grayed out or I could go to the first record and these get grayed out. You could use this for any, you don't have to do this one, uh, one third and two thirds design. You could have this of any combination of these 12 columns, you could have, uh, you don't have to have a portal at all. You could have a bunch of fields on here and, and this would be a way of, um, of organizing them. So really it's just uh, uh, the possibilities are, they're not endless, but they're pretty wide. And this is yet another helpful tool that when you're starting your FileMaker file or you're redesigning and you want a clean look and a minimalistic look and you want to help the user focus on the data and not get overwhelmed with unnecessary data or a row just a ton of buttons or a ton of tabs you want it looking for a really clean uh, clean layout then consider this it's a free file D download it download it see what you what you like what you don't like and then modify it that's it have fun.